Oh, hello, my name is Ralph Potter. I'm a member of the Wansley Parklands Community Project and my particular role is to champion the archaeology of Wansley Park, uh, which many of you may know that I've been doing over the last several years. Um, you may have seen us in the park doing digs from 2009 and uh, magnetometry from around 2006 and radar following on from that. I'm here with Dr Rob Wiseman who is our uh, new member to our uh, group and uh, he's uh, introducing a very exciting new technology called LIDAR. Thanks Ralph. I, when I've been talking about this project people have asked me because I've never heard of LIDAR, I mean what does it actually involve and I think the easiest way to actually explain to people what LIDAR is is imagine radar which people are familiar with but it's actually based on, on a laser beam instead. In this case you've mentioned the UK Environment Agency has provided this data what they've actually done is put the LIDAR detector in an aircraft which then flies over large areas of, of ground, typically three, four hundred hectares at a time, projects a laser beam down to the surface. Like a, a, a radar, that then bounces back up again and the detector can tell how long that's taken to go from the aircraft to the ground and back again and with that information can work out how high the ground is relative to the aircraft. Now the thing about radar, which I find quite extraordinary having discovered it myself recently, is is accurate to within a few centimetres or thereabouts. Now Wanset's very lucky because this is one of the areas that's been surveyed by the UK Environment Agency and so we have incredibly detailed uh, maps of the area now uh, which can um, pinpoint almost any point on the surface within a few centimetres as I mentioned. Yep. Okay that's uh, a great a bit of background information Rob I mean I should just add, add for the viewers that the Environment Agency are interested in the flood potential of the River Roding which runs along the east boundary of Wanstead Park and uh, some of you may know floods periodically right across the park and many areas of uh, Barking and Woodford and uh, Ilford. Rob the data we have is from the UK Environment Agency in relation to flooding in the Roding Valley how are we using it in Wanstead Park? Well, what we're using it for is actually a happy byproduct of the data that's been produced by the agency. The nice thing about LIDAR is it's able to detect the differences between light coming off the surfaces of leaves and coming off the ground as well. So by using the LIDAR data we can essentially strip off all of the forests that cover um, the Wanstead area and see the ground surface underneath. Now that's really fortunate the case of Wanstead Park because the old estate that was here in the 17th and 18th centuries has left quite a lot of earthworks on the ground and we're able to detect those in incredibly fine detail. Mm -hmm. um, some of the, the features that are still visible on the LIDAR are only 10 or 20 centimetres high. Some of the ornamental gardens, um, some of the features of the ploughing that's on the, on the plain. Completely invisible now to the naked eye unless you know exactly what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. But the LIDAR is able to pick those up. The other useful thing about the LIDAR is you can run it through quite a number of different computer programs that will analyse this in different ways. So you're able to pick up different sorts of features. Through the LIDAR for instance we're able to pick out the foundations of the old Wanstead house. Now the house itself was demolished in 1824 but the LIDAR still picks out where those foundations stood nearly 200 years ago. Some of the other things which are a real surprise when we started doing the analysis were we can pick up ploughing which occurred on the, on the, uh, the plain. Now we can actually detect two different ages of ploughing. One's in the 19th century, we know the area was farmed when Wanstead House was uh, demolished in 1824. What we never knew about before was it was ploughed during the Middle Ages. Now we have no historical records from this particular period, so this was a complete surprise when we showed this data to the group. But I think that's one sort of illustration about the power of this technique. It gives you a totally different perspective from the air in great detail. Using that sort of technique we're going to be surveying the whole of the Wanstead Park to identify as many of uh, the historical and archaeological features as we can in the area. What are some of the more interesting features that have come up? I'll tell you one of the ones that surprised me most, and surprised a lot of people that have actually seen it, is a feature called the fortifications. Mm -hmm. And these were built in 1714 or thereabouts, they're part of the ornamental lake system. If you go down there now, you'll notice there are islands around the lakes, but most of them are covered in trees and brambles. The LIDAR is able to see straight through those to the ground surface and reveal what's beneath. And what comes out with the fortifications, you can see a perfect star shape, five star shape where the original fortifications were built, along with an area around them which was built of tiny islands. 
these days those areas around the lake are a breeding area for um, wildlife, wildlife. Yeah. Um, but you, we can actually see the fortification still survives mm -hmm. underneath that. Another mm -hmm. nice surprise for us, because we thought it actually disappeared, mm -hmm. was what's called the amphitheatre, and that uh, faces the fortification down a canal. That's the area straight behind. Completely covered with bramble and bush these days, mm -hmm. um, but you can actually see the steps in the LIDAR image is showing where the shape of that particular amphitheatre mm -hmm. was. Again, that was built uh, 1714 or thereabouts. Yeah. So it's fantastic to see that an ancient monument like that has still survived and we can still detect it these days. Incredible. The fortifications are believed to be modelled on Tilbury Fort, which is uh, uh, Henry VIII's castle defending the Thames estuary. And if you look at the maps and look at the LIDAR images that we have of the islands, you can definitely see the resemblance. We've got a couple of nice LiDAR images here. Uh, this one is an oblique angled view from the northeast, uh, a bird's eye view of the park looking along the main axis towards the basin pond. And you can see some of the prominent features that are people are familiar with, the two mounts in particular, and the islands of the fortifications. But perhaps some not so uh, familiar features like an amphitheatre here just behind the uh, grotto and uh, some of the detail in the garden features now in Chalet Wood. Rob, would you like to add any more to that? I think the thing that really strikes me when we did the um, LiDAR images was the fortifications you can also see, which I've already mentioned, and the amphitheatre as well. They really stand yeah, they out do. so clearly in these yeah. LiDAR, LiDAR yeah. images, which you simply can't see from the ground at all. Mm. And it really illustrates just how much of those 18th century gardens still survive. Yeah, very unique. This is another poster we've produced uh, giving a little bit more detail about what LiDAR is and what LiDAR can do for us. And by way of illustration, we have a vertical LiDAR map of Wanstead Park here that we can compare directly with a 1746, 17, a mid to 18th century image, John Roke image of Wanstead Park just above and I'll let Rob explain some of the more interesting details there. Well, I think one of the things that really surprised me um, when I first looked at these maps um, from the mid-18th century, uh, coming from Australia we have a very short sort of history of European settlement. This is actually older than my country, in fact, for these gardens here. Mm. To come and see both these original maps, then look on the LiDAR and actually see how much of them still survives. We can see features like the Long Walk, the ornamental lakes, the mounts, uh, aspects of the ornamental gardens, the plain is in place, the perch pond, the heronry pond, they're all there over 250 years later. And as I mentioned earlier, some of the features like the serpentine walks which are virtually invisible from the ground, we can still see the outline of them in the, in the LiDAR images. I think this uh, LiDAR technology would be a really good way to help track down the history of Wanstead and show where it was. It gives you another dimension on this amazing park. Thank you very much, Rob. I think it's quite brings it home to you when uh, you consider that the park was old before Australia was founded. <laughs> Thank you very much for that.